sources. Um, we've commissioned additional, like what we call our premium videos. So those videos, um, previously they were only, they were accessible within the course shell. Now we have them available through the interactive ebook. That's where they were before, but now they're only housed in the interactive ebook. That's one thing that we changed a little bit. We keep investing in all of these resources. So we wanna make sure that they're um, accessibility compliant. Our ebook vendor, Vital Source, is the most accessibility compliant uh, ebook vendor in the market. They work with Braille tablets, they work with e-readers, and all of our videos work really well. We've actually changed the formatting of all of our interactive ebooks. They're gonna look a little bit different, and I'll show them to you in a little bit. But the reason why they've changed is because we wanted to make sure that anyone who is deaf, hard of hearing, has absolutely every opportunity to get the same content and materials. And that just happened to be the best way to do it because they have like the best record as far as like being able to deliver all of those things. So we do list out kind of where those premium videos are and with which assessments are tied to them. Those would be under here under the premium video with assessment and just give you some instructions on how to get to those. And then the list of the premium videos as well. For the instructor resources, um, they've actually redone a lot of, they, they redid obviously updating them to the new edition. But one thing that they absolutely changed was the organization. One thing I really like is how they did it by instructor assets by chapter. Previously, it used to be this long convoluted list that was really not organized very well. So the Kuther textbook, aside from, by the way, it won a bunch of awards in the previous edition, and I think it's winning a couple in this one already too. So it's a, it's it's quickly become like one of the top market books, which is really awesome for, especially for a, a book in its second edition to do. Um, but one of the things that Tara Kuther and the, the, the psychology team uh, uh, editorial team did was they really ramped up a lot of the resources that are available, uh, updating the class activities, chapter exercises, chapter at a glance. So why is this important? And why it's then, why is this important? Why is it organized by chapter? Imagine if, for example, you might have someone who um, is unable to teach starting in the fall or someone gets ill. We were talking about life happening, someone having to step in who maybe isn't actively teaching the class. So hopefully, yeah, knock on. That's never going to happen. <laughs> That's never going to happen. But the reason why we why I bring that up is not to be doom and gloom, especially as we're approaching the uh, was it the, the, the death chapters in the, in the term. Uh, but the reason why this is important is that if I'm an instructor and let's say I have to step in and teach something at the last minute, what can I do? I can get those chapter lecture notes right away. I can review them and then I feel a little bit more comfortable. Maybe I'm already familiar with the content because I've taught it before, but now just going back and being able to go here and get those lecture notes ready to go. And all of this is really our goal here is to make everything accessible all, you know, through your fingertips. One thing that I wanted to stress as well is that the test bank is available here as well. It's available in three locations. You can access the test bank in Microsoft Word, and they are located right there, where it says test bank Word files for every individual chapter. Another location is accessing them so that you can assign them through your Canvas course shell. Why is that important? Is that if you actually go through and create a Canvas uh, like chapter test or midterm with using multiple questions, then Canvas automatically grades it for you, and then that filters directly to your Canvas gradebook. That way you don't have to deal with Scantrons. You gotta save a couple of trees, and you can have them do that automatically. And you also, we have exam view available, which is if you do wanna have a Scantron, it's a test bank generator. It works really well with Mac and PC, and it just is able to make various uh, assessments very quickly. So this is gonna be, yeah, so you can print them out too. If you wanted to have like a, like, uh, like say I'm doing chapter one test, version A, version B, version C, like it can automatically do that for you too. It's pretty cool. So the instructor assets by chapter is gonna be where the bulk of all of those resources are going to be. Yeah. So one thing I would also point out is if you're revising your own notes from the previous edition, the instructor new edition kit that would be something that I would point out because it is, it'll show you where we were actually able to, where we actually did make those changes. So previously, like the death and dying chapter was not included 
in the first edition. And that was a feedback, a piece of feedback that we received. We just didn't want to make the book very long and we're going to, we were going to make it an optional chapter, but then everyone said, if you make a lifespan chapter, it was lifespan book, you can't really just ignore that content. You need to have it there. So that's one thing that we absolutely added to the new edition. So some of these things that we uh, heard back from our reviewers, we may have like moved, they may have just condensed a little bit, streamlined in order to make sure that it meets meets the needs of the instructors and students. And then here it'll let you know what's new, what's moved location and what's been removed altogether. And that's really done so that way you feel comfortable as you're revising your own notes and table, you know, like your assigned readings. Okay. Any questions so far? A lot of information. Okay. So all of these, so yes, yeah, so everything here, um, everything here, we are going to import this version of the course shell. And I say this version because I still wanna embed some of the, the videos, um, instructional videos for, for, for the department. That way when I copy them over to the Sierra College um, Canvas course shell, I can just remove the existing content and add the new content and it's just updated with the new edition of the book. Um, that way you don't have to do, you don't have to do that. It's just easier to copy the course over. It ends up doing it within less than two minutes. It's really, really great. So you're going to have a lot of resources at your disposal. It just depends what you're doing. If you're using the tables and figures from the book, um, if you need, uh, to look at the syllabus, all of these, are, all of these things. So if you are looking for a specific video, we have a lot of video that Sage recorded and made sure that it was accessibility compliant. I keep saying accessibility compliant. I bring that up because it's become such a big mm -hmm. term and everyone always says, is it ADA asks the question, is it ADA compliant? The truth is without getting overly technical, there are there is no resource that pertains to like internet resources that really would be considered ADA compliant. So whenever someone says, yes, we're ADA compliant, it's actually not true. What they're asking is really, is it 508 compliant? Meaning that as it pertains to the technology, is it going to meet the standards and regulations that like the US government has said, like it needs to meet these standards and we are trying to make sure that we do that. One of the things that we changed from like the previous course materials that were in the Canvas course shell, we even changed the font size, we changed the font type, everything that we did. And the reason why we did it is because now it'll work with like an e-reader. So if someone is hard, you know, hard of sight or uh, blind and it, they have to do things through like a e-reader tablet then they can still do this. So that's one of the big changes. It's a small change that you, a lot of people don't catch, but we had to go back and change a lot of things or going forward. That is a good question. I believe it is times New Roman. I believe it has to be 12 points. It's five times New Roman 12. So yes, so these, this is uh, what I'm pointing to right now is the media guide. So what I would show here is through the Excel spreadsheet you can actually find out which um, which videos are going to be the premium videos. Anything that's a designated as premium video is going to be, it's gonna have that close captioning and usually that, and for our videos, they're gonna have transcript upon request. And once again, the reason why that's important. So if you have, for example, someone who says, if you have a student who says, you know, they need a transcript for video, you know, 2.5, the video titled this. If you let us know, we'd be able to get it to you very, very quickly. We have a new platform that's being class tested right now that I'm working with right now. I've been working with them for the last like three years. So we're actually, we're doing class tests of that platform and it's really streamlined to being really accessibility compliant. And that video plat and that platform does have the captioning automatically and it has a scrolling transcript directly oh. below. So that's gonna be like the next thing that'll eventually come out where it's really just geared towards meeting accessibility compliance. And it'll be the first platform that has accessibility compliance built from the ground up versus other competitors who are trying to add it now, like as a secondary thing. And it's harder to do if you don't build it in from the ground up. So for example, if you see media type right here, oh, I can't really, where it says media type, Uh, you know, so those are the kind of videos we have. So this one is Lives in Context, Retirement, Transition, and Adjustment. 
So what does that look like to come in that space? And then of course we have those chart tool videos, which are intended to really provide uh, a little bit of animation to some of the more uh, challenging concepts that students might struggle with. So these are ones you can kind of scroll through and you can kind of look at the description. So one thing I would also point out is that sometimes you'll have like where it says web resource. So the thing here to think about when you look at a web resource is this is going to have a closed captioning. And whenever you have a, something that says Sage Premium Video, it is going to have that. The reason we include these other ones is because in, uh, instructors ask us for additional videos. And whenever it says open access video, like we'll include those. But one thing I would definitely add as a disclaimer is that those open access videos might be from YouTube or another resource. And sometimes those web, those links can be taken down. And um, a lot of universities and other institutions have been asking instructors not to include those because sometimes they don't meet accessibility um, compliance standards. And then that's when instructors can put themselves in a position of liability, which is never good. So we want to make sure we're partnering with students so they have videos that they can watch, but also instructors can assign them and, and feel confident they can have a full tool of all, all your resources that you need. So long story short, you just have a long list of a lot of videos available to you, and you can kind of scroll through, filter by which media type you want, all of those things. And this is our media guide, and this will be directly put into the uh, course shell within your Sierra College. Canvas system. So one thing I do, well, I will, uh, let me move back. So for any of your students who have any questions, they can act, they can call textbook technical support. If they ever do really have any questions, you can of course let Byron or myself know. Um, if you let Byron know something's going on, he'll usually talk to me and then we'll get something figured out pretty quickly. Um, we try to have a very fast response time. Our technical team is located in California, um, and they usually respond very, very quickly. Our callback rate um, is really high. I think it's like, I think it has like 80 something percent. At last I heard it was 86 percent. As far as like people who will actually call back if they have any additional questions. So that's pretty high. Most of the companies I think are in the 20s. So all of our people are located within California. So it's kind of nice to know you're in the same, same time zone and same um, same team of people here within our Thousand Oaks office. As it pertains to the resources, this will look very familiar if you've already been using the, um, the Canvas course shell. So what you're going to have is those learning objectives. And these are going to be tied to every video, every question, every resource that you have. These are going to be tied directly to your, um, to every piece of content that we have. A link directly to the interactive ebook is embedded here. So students can go directly from, if you're teaching within an online learning environment and you're, and if I'm a student in your class, now instead of just having to flip through the book, I can go directly to that specific page just by clicking on that link once I've had it, once I've purchased access. And your students are getting a free interactive ebook when they buy the book uh, with the, through the bookstore. So we've given the, so your students here are gonna have um, the core textbook and the interactive ebook. Was there anything else that we had? And I think like something that pertains to like the standards of the department or for the or the course description, is that right? Yeah. Right, so, but those items were giving the, the students like a really nice price discount. So they're gonna get a better deal here than if they try to buy it on Amazon or if they try to buy it anywhere else. Like they're, and any, most of the other institutions won't be able to get this deal. So you guys locked it in last edition, so we wanna make sure we're able to continue it. So that's been really good. Um, so even the layout of this, I know if, unless you spend a lot of time in the interactive ebook like I have, one thing I would point out is even this layout and the way that it's done, it's very, very different from how it was before. And the reason why is, now this is really like we really do meet that accessibility standard so that 508 compliance we're really there now with this version of the interactive ebook so that's been really exciting so we had to remove some of the icons when it comes to the digital resources and that's because they were messing with the 